Can we start, please? People are more busy signing rather than. So this is. Can you see this one here? This is the fornix. Can we see the fornix? It is under the corpus callosum. This is the one which can connects the hippocampus to the mammillary body. Mammillary body is here. So the fornix, the post commissural fornix, disappears in the lateral wall of the third ventricle and ends in the mammillary body. So this is the hippocampo mammillary tract. Now let's trace the fornix back. You'll see that I'm tracing it back now. See, can you see this? This is the fimbriae. Guys, yeah, you can see it clearly now. This is the fimbriae here. I'm lifting it up. This one. This is the fimbriae. Can you see? So it's going from below. It's, and I'm going to trace it back further. There, it's in the temporal lobe now. Can we see this? This is the fimbriae, this one. This structure which I've lifted up, it's torn now. And this is the hippocampus, there. This is the hippocampus, inside the temporal lobe, this, this structure here. So this is the hippocampus here. So this is the fimbriae. The fimbriae is going round, 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 it's going all the way around. And then it is becoming continuous with the this is the commissure of the fornix here. Can you see the fimbria here? This is the crust of the fornix now. And it meets with the opposite side to form the body of the fornix. This is the body of the fornix. So did we see how it goes all the way from the hippocampus? Can everybody see it? Because I'm looking at the specimen, I'm not looking at the screen there. So hippocampus in the temporal lobe, forming the fimbria, the fimbria going as the crust of the fornix, uniting with the other side, forming the body of the fornix, then curving down to the mammillary body here. So this is the hippocampo mammillary tract. Did we get all that? And this is the corpus callosum. So this is one thing I wanted you to all see how it goes from here all the way. From in temporal lobe, it goes all the way up and comes. So this is the most important pathway for memory consolidation. Just now we saw lesion of the hippocampus produces anterior grade amnesia and we also saw acute amnestic syndrome where there is bilateral destruction of the fornix. So any connection from the hippocampus to the mammary body will produce anterior grade amnesia. Are we clear? That's all I wanted you to see in this one. Now the next thing which I'm going to show you now, I'm going to do some serial slices to show you the basal ganglia, the internal capsule, how it is related because that's going to be our next topic. Plus this afternoon I'm going to tell you something about the, some more about the internal capsule. So what I'm going to do now, I'll keep it here. I need to keep it on something to do the serial dissections. Can I have the, the brain knife, please? Can you just pull that yes. Can you pull this so that this thing comes on top of this? Yeah. So that I can keep it here itself. Yes. Now I'm going to make serial slices. Now just keep watching. It's there in the video which I have given you also. And you'll see that. I'll take serial slice number one. First slice. That's sharp. Oh wow. That's a strike. And you'll get to see the cortical white matter. Can you see the cortical white matter? The surrounding is the grey and in between is the subcortical white matter. This is the first slice. I'm going to go deeper and deeper. So we are going to Finish off this brain completely. Morte della. Del morto. Now can you see even more clearly the grey and the white matter. The darker portion is just three millimeters thick. That is the cortex and the subcortical white matter. I think everybody can see, right? I'm going to show you something very interesting now. You'll actually be able to see how the basal ganglia and the internal capsule are related to each other. The next slice. This is the Foucault's brain knife. Okay, we are still gone deeper. At one stage you will be able to see the lateral ventricle. 
We have not yet reached that. Okay. I'll go one slice further. All of you are so good at cutting cakes, isn't it? And I'm good at... <laughs> there, can you see the beginning of the lateral ventricle? This is the anterior horn, this is the posterior horn, this is the body. And what you see in the floor of the lateral ventricle is the caudate nucleus. Here, yeah, that, that is the caudate nucleus. Let me use the probe again. Where is the probe? Yeah. This is the caudate nucleus. This is the caudate nucleus. But I'm going to go deeper. This is the body of the caudate nucleus. The head is here anteriorly, but you'll see it in much better view in the next one. This is the caudate nucleus. This is the lateral ventricle. Are we good with this? Now I'm going to go even deeper. We can see even better, and we can see some more structures now. Anterior horn is even more clearly visible, clear? This is part of the corpus callosum here. You can see the head of the caudate nucleus here. This is the head of the caudate nucleus. This is the head of the caudate nucleus. This is the body of the caudate nucleus, and you can see cut section of the caudate nucleus. Can you see a little darker pigment here? This is the choroid plexus, the one which gets calcified in the trigone, remember? This is the choroid plexus. This is the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. Okay, now I'm going to go even further deeper. I'm going to go even further deeper. Am I out? Okay. Now you can see, begin to see something which you know from your pictures and diagrams. Can you see this portion here? That is the head of the caudate nucleus. Can you see it is forming the boundary, the infralateral boundary of the anterior horn? Can you see another pigmented structure here? That is the lentiform nucleus. And can you see another globular structure cut section here? That is the thalamus. So can you see a white matter in between? So that is the internal capsule. So this is the anterior limb, this is the genu, this is the posterior limb. Are we clear? Yes. Mind you, these fibers are traveling in a vertical axis, so you're seeing the cut section of that. They are going in a vertical axis from up to down and down to up. That's why they're called projection fibers. So you're seeing the cut portion of that. That is what we see in the pictures, but that's what we see in the CT scans and x-rays. I'm going to go one slice deeper now. This is going to be a very fine slice. Ideally, what we need is somebody to give a little counter support with your hand. Somebody is wearing a glove because I'm going to take a very thin slice. You have to come to my right. Because I'm going to take a very thin slice. Yes, don't worry, I won't cut your hand. I'm sure of that. Oh, you want me to cut just one finger? <laughs> Okay. There you can see even better. You can see the head of the caudate nucleus here. This is the head of the caudate nucleus. A little bit of light, yes. There, the head of the caudate nucleus. The thalamus. This whole thing is the lentiform nucleus. And this is the internal capsule in between. The anterior limb, genu, the posterior limb. Outside the internal lentiform nucleus, there's another thin sheet of white matter. That is known as the external capsule. That's why we say that this is the external capsule, this is the internal capsule. Strictly speaking, they are not encapsulating the lentiform, but it is described that way. That's why they call it external capsule and internal capsule. That's how the definition came. So I think you can clearly see what we see in the pictures in the cut sections. Caudate nucleus, head, this is the head of the caudate nucleus. It is forming the anteromedial boundary of the anterior horn. This is the thalamus. It forms the posterior medial boundary of the posterior limb. And this is the lentiform nucleus. Actually, it consists of two structures. An outer portion, which we shall see on Monday, called the putamen, and an inner portion called the globus pallidus. And in between is the, is the internal capsule. So are we good with this?
and I'll take one final slice and you'll see, you can see the same thing even in this cut portion. You can see the same thing here. Can you see the head of the caudate nucleus, the thalamus, the lentiform nucleus and the internal capsule? So we are seeing the opposite of this in the cut section. This is one, the one which I'm going to give you a remedial today. This is going to be an even thinner slice. I'll try to do it without anybody's hand. This is showing us. Hmm? Show them. <laughs> okay. We can see some small lacunar infarcts, by the way, which I'm going to tell you in the, in the stroke chapter. These, these are lacunar infarcts. But you can see the, again the head of the caudate nucleus, the thalamus, the lentiform nucleus, and the internal capsule is almost disappearing now. So these are the structures. By the way, what is this cortex here that you see hidden under this? This is the insular cortex. So the insular cortex is situated lateral to the external capsule. I'm going to show this to you, all these structures, again on Monday in the pictorial form, but you will know exactly what I'm referring to. So is everybody good with this? So these are the two things I wanted you to see. The hippocampus, the fornix, how it goes, and how the caudate nucleus and the basal ganglia are related to the internal capsule. On just this projection fibers, I'll take 15 minutes of your time this afternoon so that you'll understand something better. Okay? We are good. Okay. So can you can we chop this off?